Welcome once again to the three amigos talking about things that are not so well known about Hollywood. Hey Manny, Manny great to see you Pacheco. Again. Manny, what? Manny, Manny. Yes. <laughs> hey Manny, um, we we've talked about uh, B movies a lot, um, and in, I, my assumption is because I don't know historically accurately. Uh, but they were really, the B-movies were really popular in the 40s, 30s, and 40s, and started dying out, particularly as television came in. Am I correct? Yeah, they also started dying out as movies got longer. You know, oh. just mm -hmm. a two-and-a-half, three-hour movie, yeah. you don't want to see a second movie. So, yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's really when they started to die out. What, but, yes. What genre was the most popular uh, of the B-movies? Do you think they, they made more of one kind of uh, I do. I mean, you know, the, you can make a case for science fiction or maybe Westerns, uh, definitely film noir. But I think that the detective pictures were real popular. And I mean, I mean, we've 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 talked about this before. The Thin Man, uh, Sherlock Holmes, they set the stage for those detective style films. And I think B movies really thrive with these 68 or 63 minute movies that essentially would have been television programs yes. had television been around. Yeah, exactly. and, but, but But with better stars. Uh, and, and then there was a series of these detective movies that we've never talked about. And I've spent the last, let's say, six months on YouTube and on Internet Archive looking, I mean, literally binge watching a number of these fabulous detective programs we've never talked about. Well, like, for instance, give me some titles. Would I be familiar with them? Yeah, what's that now? Would I be familiar with these titles? I think for the most part you would. I'm not going to give you titles. I'm going to give you the detectives' names. Oh, I mean, okay. It's all one detective, okay. basically. Yeah. Oh. And so in, in one case, of course, you're familiar with Charlie Chan. That that might be the most prolific. That's there exactly were, the first thing that came to mind. Of yeah. course, there were 30, 40, you know, movies of Charlie Chan, and, and, and you know, Truth be told, I've not seen every Charlie Chan, but I've seen a number of them. And of course, those were yeah. um, and they were played by a number of people. Sidney Toller, Warner Olin did the original. And of course, eventually, even Key Luke, who played yes. one of the number one sons, would end up playing Charlie Chan. Uh, but there were offshoots of that. Mr. Wong was an example of where Boris Karloff and then later Peter Laurie would play these characters. The problem with these, with these detectives were they were played by non- Chinese, or maybe in, in Mr. Wong's case, might have been non-Japanese. Um, but anyway, the, the fact is, they weren't played by Asiatic actors, and that was right. always seems to be a problem uh, later on. Then there were the, the traditional names you might have heard of, and you definitely heard of the actors who played them. So, for example, uh, a really big um, of the 30s um, that started a, a lot of these what I call detective sh movies was the Bulldog Drummond series of movies. And, oh, yeah. and John Howard, who was the love interest, the other love interest to Cary Grant in the Philadelphia story, played many of these um, Bulldog Drummond uh, movies. Of yes. course, yes. really British, really um, get them in, involved in, in like the perils of Pauline type problems and yes. they get out of them and, and then of course defeat the villain. One that was early in the 30s was Ellery Queen, who was played by uh, Ralph Bellamy. No kidding. Yeah, and El it was a series of four Ellery Queens that were, you know, three of them I didn't really care for. The first one, obviously, is the best one of the bunch. Uh, but Ralph Bellamy's always good. You got to give you it bet. to Ralph Bellamy. You know, solid actor. He's going to be in my next book. So, I mean, I, I'm going to be a big fan of Ralph Bellamy, of course. <laughs> you know who did a lot of these? Um, War Warren Williams. And um, he appeared in some of the Philo Vance, early 30s, late 20s, early 30s detective. Philo movies. Vance, yeah. But later, he also did the Lone Wolf series of films and the Crime Doctor. And I don't know if you've heard of these. No, those are not, no. I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, the Crime Doctor is particularly good because basically what the Crime Doctor premise is, is you've got a villain who, who, who develops amnesia. And the person who actually saves his life, even with the amnesia, is a doctor. And so he ends up devoting his life as a doctor fighting crime, even though he really is a villain. Yeah, but, that's interesting. But, but that, that drops after the first episode. He becomes literally the crime doctor. Yeah. 
So, the, the, but that's that's mostly Warren Williams, and uh, Warren Williams was always a really good, suave William Powell esque type of actor with a little more edge. And so he, th- those films were good. And how about the Falcon? Oh, mm-hmm. and this is interesting. The Falcon was played by George Saunders. Yeah. Didn't want to get typecast in it, and so he handed the role over to his brother after three three episodes. He handed the role over to his brother Tom Conway, who sounded like George Saunders, and he really was his brother. So the Fal- Falcon became Tom Tom Conway's a piece. Well, Manny, I remember Bulldog Drummond not as a movie, but as a TV serial, as a uh, a cliffhanger serial. We'd have an episode. Of course, they weren't half hour. They weren't hour long episodes. We'd see a, a half, maybe half an episode, and there'd be a cliffhanger. And tune in tomorrow for the next episode. <laughs> as as for all I remember, in early television, there must have been a host introducing them. You know, the way they did with the little rascals and everything else. But right. that's my recollection of Bulldog Drummond, not a movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I mean, his. Of course, it was a radio serial as well. So, I mean, there are many platforms where you would find these these detectives, these B list detectives. My favorite, by the way, of of the group that's not the Thin Man or Sherlock Holmes, is believe it or not, Michael Shane. Uh, the yeah. Michael Shane series of films. There was like seven of them, and they are all played by Lloyd Nolan, who I have really come to appreciate is one of the finest. Um, character actors of the 1930s yes. and 40s. He could do yes. it all. And he plays Michael Shane. If you haven't found these Michael Shanes, these are from 20th Century Fox. They are really, really good. They're fun. There's the witty dialogue, very snappy. Michael Shane spelled S-H-A-Y-N-E. And very, very good. The other ones that I really like a lot, too, are the Boston Blackies. Oh, I love that. Mm. With Chester, I love Boston Blackies. I yeah, with Chester them. Morris. And those are really good as well. Now, in many of these, for example, um, in The Lone Wolf, uh, he has a, a sidekick and it happens to be his valet uh, or va- valet, I can valet, valet, uh, yeah. uh, played by usually Eric Bloor, who is very British. But in, in a lot of these, like The Falcons, you get somebody like an Alan Jenkins, who's your sidekick, and you get these sidekicks that are just as popular. And yes. then, there's, I mean, look, Let's not let's let's be um, let's be diverse here. You can't leave off Torchy Blaine in the Torchy series of movies with Glenda Farrell. Glenda was absolutely terrific in the late 30s and early 40s, as was the Nancy Drew series of mysteries as well. And I know Nancy Drew really was parlayed into like 1960s and 1970s, just like Ellery Queen was. Yes, but. Yeah. It really does start in the late 1930s, the Nancy Drew series of, of, of films that are detective okay. films. So, yeah, we got Nancy Drew. We got Torchy Blaine. We got Maisie, who was played by Ann Southern. So, I mean, yeah, we had some great, great series of films. And I got to tell you, even Perry Mason, they had Perry Mason at, in, in a series of films, again, played by Warren Williams. Wow. Hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, you have mentioned so many names, as you pointed out, that are familiar, you know, the detective characters, but yeah. well, I never heard of them as old movies. I, right. I, you know, as I said, with Bulldog Drummond, I saw it on television. That's right. So this is, I'm going to have to do a lot of watching. I'm going to have to oh, do a lot of and, research. And let me just tell you something. You're watching something like Charlie Chan. You got to spend a week because there's like 40 of them. Oh, mm-hmm. I know. You know, and I, mean, I did see, I did see a lot of Charlie Chan. But if you're watching Michael Shane, you can do that in an evening. If you're watching Torchy Blaine, you can do that in an evening. If you're doing Ellery Queen, there was only four of them. You can do that. And I didn't even mention Dick Tracy. How about mm. Dick Tracy? Really? Ralph, Bird. Ralph Bird's Dick Tracy was great. And okay. one of the Dick Tracys, you know, featured a top star. Boris Karloff actually made an appearance in one of those Dick Tracys. Dick Tracy meets Gruesome. So, yeah, Dick Tracy, a series of four films that were made in the late 40s. And wow. they were popular as well. Well, uh, tell me about uh, just a, a quick overview. It sounds to me like half of those were taken from books. Uh, oh, I'd say so. Perry Mason, for sure. Yeah. Ellery Queen, for sure. Uh, Nancy Drew, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yes, you're right. Um, Bulldog Drummond may have come from a, a book. Um, I don't How know. How about Torchy that. Blaine? Torchy Blaine, now that was a fun. You know, let me tell you something about Torchy Blaine. Torchy Blaine was created as a character for Glenda Farrell to play a reporter type, as opposed to a detective. She's a reporter. And that 
archetype that was created for Glenda Farrell became the archetype for Lois Lane in the Superman comics. Uh, I don't mean movies, I mean in the comic books. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, and again, Glenda Farrell gonna appear in my next book. And I tell this great story about how Torchy Blaine became a role model for women who wanted to get into the business of reporting. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, either as a detective or as a as a as a, uh, a newspaper reporter, and th we're talking 1938, 1939, 1940, and of course her her counterpart they got to have a sidekick is her fiance Barton McLean who never starred in anything but he plays opposite Glenda Farrell Barton <laughs> McLean one of the great character actors that tough guy guy you know from he he appeared in a lot of a lot of shows a yeah. lot of shows and he now I, I, Manny I'm. I'm going to throw you a curve here because uh, when you remember, mentioned George remember, Michael, hold on, we're not talking about it. baseball here. Manny has just <laughs> uncovered the mystery of detective movies, and you're throwing him a curveball. Throw me your what? curve. Go ahead. The Johnny. name, okay, go ahead, Torchy, the way you describe Torchy Blaine, reminds me of the comic strip Brenda Starr. Yes, mm. and they actually did Brenda Starr series of, of movies that are not very good at all. I, 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 there were like three of them. I watched one. I couldn't bring myself to watch the other two. <laughs> <laughs> they do, you, do you think Brenda Starr, the, the the woman who created and did the comic strip Brenda Starr for I don't know forty years, do you yeah. think she took it from Torchy Blaine? Well, could, either that or from Lois Lane. It could have been one or the other. But you know, there's always these spinoffs and these 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 uh, sequel types. Sure, sure. But no, anyway. no, that's a really good. That's a really that's a really good uh, a, a example of how you could get all of these different types of characters that you find in literature, comic books, uh, radio. Radio dramas were very popular to draw something from. Uh, there was a, a radio show called Mr. District Attorney, and they did a series of District Attorney, Mr. District Attorney films as well, three of them. Yeah. I, yeah. And Dennis O'Keefe played the first one. So, I mean, yes, I mean, there are so many of these. And I mean, really, we could spend a couple of hours just reminiscing. But my suggestion, let me close this by saying my suggestion would be binge watch any one of these that you want. They might not be in very good shape. You know, they might be like taken off a TV screen that they may they may look not very clear. They may look very dark as many detective mo movies are because they happen at night and they look darker than they should. But they're well worth the watch for the snappy patter dialogue. And, of course, the whodunit uh, implications yep. and who the villain might have been. Great B-list movies. If I went to the movies in the 40s, if I had been alive then... I would have gone for the B movies as opposed to maybe the um, the, the the A list starring yeah. big star movies because those B the, those B movies were definitely popcorn movies. Oh hmm. yeah, no doubt about it. Well, up until whatever it was the, the late fifties or sixties, everybody went to the movies because they had everything. They had a cartoon. They had a newsreel. They had a B movie. They had the A movie. You know, they had affordable sudden, popcorn. You could you've got a popcorn and a soda. And you know, they were doing an intermission in the middle of the A movie so that you could get more popcorn and another yep. soda. You know, you, you did bring up something that made me think. You know, I have to say the popularity of Westerns in the 50s television gave way to the popularity of the detective TV shows of the 1960s. I mean, you had a lot of detective shows. Yeah. in the 1960s that were very popular, yes. much like these B movies that we would see in the 30s and 40s. I mean, you had Mannix, you had sure. Ironside, you had uh, yeah. Telly Savalas doing something and William Cannon doing another yeah. thing. You had Barnaby Jones. I mean, yeah. you had a lot of these detective series, so. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So. Manny, great talking <laughs> uh, again about uh, not obscure, but certainly unknown and maybe forgotten Hollywood. Well, that's that's what I do. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.